this is a video that I prepared along of, of a lecture that I prepared along with Karen Renault to give in Hanoi in 2017 on the 100th anniversary of the Russian Revolution and it's on the topic of direct democracy and how that relates to, to socialism and the technologies of direct democracy. I'm going to go through the ideas of democracy from ancient democracy, the American idea of democracy, the idea of democracy the communists had, the idea of democracy the German social democrats had. I'll then be looking at the technology that now exists for direct democracy, focusing particularly on HandyVote, the system we developed for it. I'll then start looking at economic votes and how you can make take economic decisions by direct democracy. So what was the idea of democracy in, in the ancient world? Well basically it was that key decisions were taken by assemblies of the whole people. Uh, this is a, a modern instance of direct democracy taking place in a, a Swedish a Swiss town. It's worth understanding what people originally meant when they talked about democracy in ancient Greece. There were three principles. The first was participation of all citizens in a mass democratic assembly. The second, and this is often forgotten, was that day-to-day -day administration was in the hands of a randomly selected council drawn by lot. And the third principle was that control of the law was in the hands of the people. This meant that courts were controlled by large randomly selected juries. There were no professional judges drawn from the upper class. The random selection mechanism is quite sophisticated. This is um, a photo from the museum in Athens which shows a bit of the technology. This thing here with a set of slots was something that was a voting machine or is described now as a voting machine but it's really a random selection machine. Each citizen had an ID card made out of bronze and they put their cards into slots in the machine and then a handle was turned and if a particular coloured ball came out of the slot, the slot here, then the person who who was the had just put their card in would be selected to be in the council. It may have been slightly more sophisticated than that. It may they may have selected whole whole columns of people to be in the council. So you had to have a lot of people fill in their their cards and then you turn the handle and if a white ball comes out nobody gets selected. All the cards are removed again and people go away. The next batch of people comes along and then a particular column would be selected. Now, that's not what people think of democracy as now, though. They don't think of it in terms of this random selection and direct assemblies. They think of it in terms of the American model. Now, here's a quote from Marx. But unheard unheroic though bourgeois society is. It nevertheless needed hero heroism, sacrifice, terror, civil war, national wars to bring it into being. And in the austere classical traditions of the Roman Republic, the bourgeois gladiators found the ideals and the art forms, the self-deceptions, that they needed to conceal from themselves the bourgeois limited content of their struggles and keep their passion on the high plane of great historic tragedy. You see that in the architecture that the American Republic um, uses, all obviously based on the Roman classical tradition. But what's not so obvious to people now is that the American Republican model, from which all subsequent bourgeois republics were derived, was a conscious copy of the Roman state, not the Athenian state. You have to understand the basic structure 
of the class struggle in a class in a slave society you have three main groups the aristocracy the free citizens and the slaves you have a co conflict between the free citizens and the aristocracy over land ownership and you have a conflict between the slaves and the aristocracy over direct exploitation which is enforced by the whip now what the Roman Constitution was designed to do was to give a semblance of power to the free citizens whilst actually concentrating power in a senatorial aristocracy and this enabled the free citizens to be used to suppress any potential revolt by the slaves and the American state when it was set up was another slave state same economic system as ancient Rome and it deliberately copied the Roman Constitution it's obvious that it has a Senate what people are less aware of is that the Electoral College was also derived from a Roman institution the Comitia Centuria to ensure indirect election of what's called the President and Vice President in the United States and what were called the Consuls in Rome now all these electoral systems end up selecting members of the upper classes these are the people that have the skills money and connections to be selected as candidates uh, Trump uh, a billionaire is just an epitome of this underlying process which has been going on for a long time so we'll now move on to the ideas of communist democracy in the communist manifesto it says that the immediate aim of the communists is the same as that of all proletarian parties the formation of the proletariat into a class overthrow of the bourgeois supremacy and conquest of political power by the proletariat we have seen that the first step in the, in the revolution of the working class is to raise the proletariat to the position of ruling class and win the battle of democracy so the time they're saying this the proletariat is not yet a class it has to be formed into a distinct class in society by the process of political struggle and it was this political struggle which would make the mass of individuals act in a collective way in their common interest and the proletariat must conquest political power must become a ruling class and the raising of the proletariat to the position of ruling class is the same thing as the winning of democracy you can't understand the ideas that the communists had about democracy without looking at the example of the Paris Commune in 1870 a democratic revolution took place in the city of Paris after a prolonged siege of the city by the armies of Prussia it led to what was called the Commune of Paris a commune being the French term for a unit of local government and the constitutional structure set up by the Commune had a big influence on Marx's thinking about democracy and through Marx influence the constitutional thought of the USSR and also for that matter the constitutional form of the People's Republic of, of China and the three principles that have been drawn by the Marxist Leninists from this experience were that you have representative institutions operating by indirect election all representatives must be subject to recall and representatives must have the same wage as an average worker now this was the principle that the Russian Social Democrats applied when they um, carried out the revolution in Russia and the structure of the state there was that you had local Soviets uh, you had the all Russian Congress of Soviets which was elected out of delegates from the local Soviets this then elected a central executive committee which had a couple hundred members and that elected a council of people's commissars which acted as the government 
Now, if you look at this, this has got one, two, three, four levels of indirection. And this is a copy of the ideas that the actually the prudentness had of how the commune in Paris was going to be extended across the whole country had the French Revolution of 1870 succeeded. Now it has certain properties which are undesirable in the long term though. Suppose that a, a, a member of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party was 50 times more likely to be nominated and, ten ti and four times more likely to be elected if nominated than a random non-party citizen. That would immediately give 200-fold over-representation of the RSDLP in the local Soviets. And if the RSDLP made up one thousandths of the Russian population, which is realistic, they would end up with 20% of the local Soviets. Um, the indirect election, would, going through multiple levels, would then amplify any, any inequalities present at the lower level. The end result was a total domination of the Council of Commissars by the RSDLP, and in the long run this type of dominance by one party led to the vitiation of Soviet democracy, so that, that when the leadership of that party under Yeltsin decided to destroy the USSR, there was no grassroots opposition to that because the local Soviets were no longer effectively um, acting as centres of debate and, and uh, discussion. Now this is not because Soviet democracy was suppressed. Soviet democracy existed, but this indirect system inevitably leads to a concentration of power in one party. It's unstable. Uh, as a multi-party system. Now, how does this contrast to what the Social Democrats wanted, the other main branch of the, the workers' movement in the 20th century? Well, their programme internationally was modelled on the what was adopted as the Airfoot programme of the German Social Democrats in the 1890s. And it's political section called for direct legislation through the people by means of rights of proposal and rejection, self-determination and self-government to the people and realm and state, election of magistrates by the people with responsibility to the people and annual voting of taxes, education of all to bear arms, a militia in place of the standing army, decision by popular representatives on questions of war and peace, settlement of all international disputes by arbitration. Now this is actually very radical and involves direct participatory democracy, something which later social democracy threw out. They abandoned their original 1890s commitment to direct democracy. But if you look at these things, direct legislation through the people by means of proposal and rejection, that is what the yellow vests are demanding in France now. Uh, annual voting of taxes by the people. That's never been introduced. The yellow vests are also bringing back the old Paris Commune demand that representatives receive, should receive no more than average workers' wages. So old ideas 19th century ideas of direct democracy are being revived in the class struggles of the early 21st century.